Welcome to Linked Up, Breaking Boundaries in Education, a podcast that focuses on what is happening in education today, connecting everyone to the movers and shakers that are breaking boundaries in the education arena. Hey, look at us. We are together again. I know it. And it's just, uh, we just skipped July was the only time. Yeah. But we were together in June and now again in August. And we're in New Jersey. I have never been to New Jersey before. The Kansas girls in Jersey. Yes. Jersey Shore. Wait. And we have a bunch of other, a couple other Jersey girls with us. Yes. Very interesting today. We are on the rooftop of the Asbury Hotel. Now, I grew up in Asbury Park until I was four. My father grew up here. In fact, my grandfather, this used to be an actual Salvation Army. And my grandfather hung the doors in this building when it was oh a Salvation Army. Goodness. So this is really special to be here. I come hang out here, have dinner, drinks all the time. So we have an event coming up. We're all going to, we are all going to be here. So we said, let's, let's do this. Do Instead of doing it remotely, let's be together. So we have our amazing guests right here on the rooftop with us. And they have the iconic Asbury Park Convention Hall right behind them. They, you can see that right behind them. So ladies, so our topic today, Jerry, go ahead and introduce our topic. Oh, absolutely. So we have three powerhouse women that have been in the tech industry yep. and they have really blazed the trail for the rest of us. They really have. Yep. They have made such a difference and they've all... Don't, I mean, they've worked so hard to contribute to empowering other women. So we're talking today about leadership. We're talking about empowering women. And we're also talking about what's it like to be a, a trailblazer in a man's world. Mm -hmm. So I cannot wait to hear what they have to say. Oh, and we will mention their books too, yeah. their authors. Yes. So let's get started. Who who shall we start with, Jamie? I don't know. I think Kathy's kind of the leader of the group. She's the leader of everyone. Yes. <laughs> the ring if, leader. There's if something you to be are said in, for if, age. Something to be said for age. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. If you are in ed tech and you have not heard the name Kathy Hurley, I don't know where you've been. <laughs> Kathy, introduce yourself. Tell us just a tiny bit about yourself. Uh, I'm Kathy Hurley. I actually am a Jersey girl. I say Jersey girl has come home. Um, I started out as a teacher in Roxbury Township and went into the industry and was in the education ed tech industry for about 45 years and worked for companies like uh, IBM and Pearson. I retired from Pearson, Pearson Foundation about five years ago, and I just can't quit the game. So I'm consulting and I'm on a couple boards and I just love being part of this industry. Kathy, we're going to we're going to do this teacher style and have you hand it off to our next guest. Um, oh, that's a tough one because these are both fabulous women. So let me see. I don't even know how to go in age, but uh, I'm going to go to my left <laughs> and and then we'll go to Lisa. And we won't discuss what the age decision was there. So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Thank you, Kathy. So yes, I'm Ann McMullen, and I was an educator for 34 years. I worked in the Klein School District just outside Houston, Texas, and it was actually while I was still uh, working as an educator in Klein that I first met the wonderful Kathy Hurley, who came to Houston area, and we connected at that point. But I actually had been a U.S. history teacher for uh, 18 years, and in the mid-90s, started playing around a bit with technology and the internet with my students. And because I was one of the first teachers in the district to use technology who was not a technology teacher, the superintendent and the board asked me to what I jokingly say, cross over to the dark side and leave my classroom and go work at the central office. But what I got to do there uh, was to head up uh, a department that eventually became the Educational Technology Department, and I was the Executive Director of Educational Technology. And during that time, I also served as the co-chair of the Texas uh, Educational Technology Group, which developed the Texas Long Range Plan for Technology. But about eight years ago, my husband and I both followed our two sons who were living in Los Angeles, California, and we moved there, and that's when I started my consulting business, which quite honestly I thought was going to be around 
ed tech, but I got more questions about leadership than anything else. And so for the last several years, I've been doing consulting work around education leadership. And one of the great people I've had the opportunity to connect with is Lisa Schmucky and her team at EdWeb. <laughs> Good segue. No, a, no <laughs> age thing nice. here. We're just passing it off. We love working together. Yeah. Uh, I'm Lisa Schmucky. I'm the founder of edweb.net. And I am handicapped in this group because I was never an educator and I always felt like the fact that I haven't had an experience in the classroom is something that I really miss having. But um, I spent most of my career up until recently in educational publishing and um, just developed such an appreciation for teachers and who we were developing materials for. So 13 years ago, I had the idea to found edweb.net, which is a social network for educators, professionals in education, uh, teachers, administrators, librarians, and it's grown to over a million educators around the world. And we use it primarily for professional learning, virtual professional learning, and yes. um, runs programs on a regular basis for us around digital learning and partnership with AASA and COSIN. And Kathy has done programs on women and girls leadership. We've done programs on that. And it's just such a gift to be able to do it on so many different subjects. And particularly with the pandemic hitting, I mean, we were doing this, you know, um, already and we just had to adjust for increases in volume, which was like a really good so, so we're really happy to be able to do that. It, it just makes me realize how much my teachers meant to me because it has taken a lot to grow a company and the risks that you take. And um, for me, it's very much about giving back. And uh, so it means a lot. And Lisa, I know I've been on some of your webinars. How many people do you have attend? It is phenomenal, the number of people. And are they all in the United States? Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, no, they're not. We're actually in 185 countries now, but most of the attendees are from the United States, but we love when we go on live and knows that oh, yes. one of the things we they love is I know is to come on early and, you know, say hello to where people are signing on from all over the world. Yeah. It really makes us, you know, realize we are part of a global community Absolutely. and, you know, we, they're all, all of our presentations are in English, but but still to realize we're concerned about the same things right. and everybody's concerned about helping students and we do 400 live events a year now and the average attendance is 500 uh, for all of those so the chats are super engaged oh, yes. and that opportunity for them to do that while while they're um, engaging in, in receiving information is is great so Lisa, I had one more follow-up question for you about all of the seminars and things you're doing. Have you found that there's more participation in COVID than you had in the past? Or how has that affected the work you're doing? Oh yeah, it's been crazy. I, I mean, when everything shut down in March of last year, um, uh, we were just overwhelmed with attendance. So things have settled back down to a, a higher than we were before and a little bit of a more normal level. Um, but the, the thing that's really been amazing is all of our programs are sponsored by incredible organizations, you know, like AASA and, and COSIN that we talked right. about, or Girls and Women's Education Project, right. you know, these great organizations. And they pivoted just to change their programs immediately. So if they had something, you know, that was going to be on, you know, teaching English in the classroom, it was teaching English in the remote classroom. Right. Yeah. So that really made it, you know, helpful at the time uh, to really address what they needed. I mean, it's been so great. Your innovation from years ago is serving so many people now um, in such an amazing way. Oh, and they're available on podcasts too, since we're on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Just throw that in. <laughs> and the other thing is, I think it's letting us know that we are one global community and we all have the same, we're all facing the same issues in education. It doesn't matter really where you live. We all, we all face those. And what we say we're doing is peer, you know, we're facilitating peer to peer learning because it's really helping educators in different roles talk to each other and share ideas and practices. And we're just the facilitators of that. It's great. Right. And mentoring each other and, and just staying in contact. It's just wonderful. You know, I have a quick question. You know, this is about, you know, sage advice from your wisdom, right? What each of you have broken through different boundaries. What have been the challenges that uh, the most, the biggest challenges that you've had to overcome um, in to get to what you are doing now and how you're 
providing for so many. I'll jump in first. Yeah. One, of, one of the biggest challenges for anybody trying to lead innovation in education is that we have for over a century, that's the way we've always done it. And so getting beyond that's the way we've always done it, you have to be very compelling and convincing as to why you're going to do that. And the way you have to lead people to, to move forward on that, I think is really important. But I also think that's one of the gifts of the pandemic is that people had a chance to experience something a little differently, most of which we didn't appreciate and didn't want to have mm. it, but it, it forced us to think differently about some things. And so innovation may come a little easier now and not always fall back on that's the way we've always done it. That's right. I have a friend that used to say that most education in a, innovation is killed through domestic violence. The people within the system yeah, are the yeah. ones that are squashing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I, I, and that's true. And so the pandemic, when it came upon us so quickly, none of us had been through this. None of us knew what to do. But educators really have stepped up and led the way in that. I think there's been a lot of silver linings. Now, I have a niece that's a teacher, and I remember when she first started, she'd come home and she'd say, I have all these really good ideas. And when I talk, go in the teacher's lounge, I talk about them, they all go, we've tried that. Let's do something else now. <laughs> we've tried, it didn't work. <laughs> so I think you have to, I mean, you talk about women in leadership. I think innovation, people who are trying to do innovation have to be leaders, whether it's men or women. Um, I, that's true. I mean, you want to go back, back to the challenges. Um, I think there's challenges for anybody who's going to be uh, an executive in any kind of business. So uh, I, I ha would have to say I was very fortunate early on that I had, you know, male and female mentors. Where today I think there's a lot more female mentors who have a lot of those soft skills that can help young women really not be afraid to develop those things, not be afraid to say, I'm a good communicator, or I'm really good with relationships, or I'm really good at problem solving, you know, instead of there being empathetic, you know, these are really things that are so important in business now that, um, and we can talk about mentoring a little later, but that's something that I'm very, very high on that people need to ask if they can, you, you, if you want to be a mentor to them or, if, and you have to take it serious. Absolutely. And that leads in perfectly, Kathy, to the books that you've written. I know you wrote one about women in leadership, and now you have another book coming out. Can you tell us what your topics have been in your books and what led you to write a book? You know, I was very fortunate to, uh, to be part of um, a program at Harvard called the Advanced Leadership Initiative. And it was actually for people who were getting ready to retire. And the thing was to now to have more of a purpose fulfilled life. You know, what am I going to do to give back? Yeah, I've been successful in my job. Um, and then what are you going to do to give back? And I was really lucky to meet wonderful people who came from every facet of life. And as I thought about that, I thought there are leaders everywhere. So uh, at Harvard, I, I met uh, or read about uh, uh, two guys, uh, Faulkner and um, uh, Buckman and Zenger, who did a study on women and leadership, that they have so many good qualities that make them really good leaders that I wanted to kind of uh, look into that a little bit further. So I went to my friends and <laughs> said, who are some women who have really done some great things? And my sister-in-law, uh, Priscilla Shumway and I, we talked about it and we said, there are really not a lot of examples of real women doing great leadership things. And when we started thinking about it, we thought we want to tell those stories. So we had uh, women, you know, from all over the U.S. Um, Wiley published a book. It's been a very successful yes. book. And I do, um, well, I work with Lisa on <laughs> webinars. I work with Anne. We do a lot of uh, um, webinars together at speeches with different women's groups at presentations about you know, you yeah. know, women in leadership and featuring some of your women on yeah. so that yeah. they can talk so we, about their we experiences. Have talk, so, powerful. Yeah. so the next yeah. book, <laughs> I am a glutton for punishment. Um, <laughs> I came to me and said, now you've done this book. Why don't we do something about women and being entrepreneurs? And um, so Dr. Bobby Kershan, who you know, a lot of people know, she is um, was at the um, University of Pennsylvania running their entrepreneurial innovation program. 
So we started talking about it and we said, well, let's make this a little different. We're going to talk about women in the entrepreneurial mindset. We're going to interview people from all over the world. So we don't only just have people from the US, we have India, Tanzania, Ecuador, Africa, you know, and we have young women, uh, older, you know, more experienced older women, women, experienced <laughs> women. <laughs> uh, so it's been really fun doing this next book. It won't be out until the end of November, but it's going to be written a little differently. It's not just about the stories. It's really more about the themes. Again, looking at passion, looking at empathy, looking at things like communication, and then tying in the interviews. And our own Lisa Schmucky is going to be in the book. How about that? That's fantastic. Yeah. So yeah. We're very, I'm very excited about that. So thank you for asking. And of course, uh, Anne has her book too, um, Life Lessons in, in Leadership. leadership. So lessons. we do a lot of that kind of stuff together. So it, it's been fun. Yeah. And you ladies are so good with segues. You know, we don't even need to be here, Jamie. Oh, we're gonna, got this. We're gonna go get a drink. You, you keep going. We know later we'll tell each other you were hogging it. You did three minutes more than me. So I, I'm very sensitive. Oh, yes. And we want to hear about your book. Oh, thank you. Yes. So I mentioned that when I transitioned from working in a school district to working as an independent consultant, the questions I got were about leadership. You know, how did you do this? How did you navigate a district of 40,000 students and teachers and so forth to embrace technology in the mid to late 90s, for goodness sakes, you know, how did that happen? And so I started thinking about it. And as I thought about leadership and different leadership roles, it, it occurred to me that, you know, people fall into leadership roles and people aspire to be that, but that there really are a number of different leadership roles. And in my own life, I thought about initially, I have one brother, he's nine years younger than I am. And when he was born, I really thought he was mine, you know, that it was my new doll to play with. And so I thought, you know, being the oldest sibling in a family is one of the ways that people are leaders. Another is certainly, uh, being uh, in school where children have an opportunity oh, to be this. held, you know, to be <laughs> holding the president of the class or whatever it might be. And then uh, I think two of the most impactful leadership positions in our whole world are parents and teachers. Because if you think about it, parents impact generations to come and teachers impact thousands. So those are leadership roles. And then you have the more traditional ones that, uh, you know, what that we know people in leadership roles, whether your title is principal, superintendent, general, CEO, you know, those are leadership positions. So I thought about what are some common things through those. And so the book Life Lessons in Leadership looks at five different areas uh, things that all leaders need to do, whether you fall into any one of those roles. And the first one is listen, uh, because if you're not listening, you're not knowing what's going on. So it, it's really not just to hear, but to truly listen. And the second one was then learn, you know, because by listening, you learn. And I think a lot of leaders may have a downfall in that they may fall into a position and think, well, I'm here because I know it all and therefore that's why I got this job. But no, you need to continue to learn. So listen, learn. And the next one I had was love. And by love, I mean, you really need to love your project, your process and your people. And I always say, you don't have to like everyone, but you do need to have their best interest at heart if they're working to move your vision and your goals through. So you need to love them. And then leverage, which is leverage the talents of others, which I will, the only success I will take from my work as an ed tech director is that I hired really well. And I had wonderful teachers who became what today we would call instructional technology coaches. Back then that term wasn't available, but they were teachers who taught other teachers how to work in their curriculum areas and with their age groups to leverage the technology. And then the last L in the book is luck. And with luck, my point is that you've got to either, number one, be ready for it when it shows up. If it knocks at the door and you're not ready, you won't be able to take advantage of it. And then sometimes we have to just create our own luck. So those are the five lessons in leadership and we do workshop and things around those. So thank, thank you for asking. Thank you. But yeah. Just love your alliteration. Just it sounds like such a great theme to the book. Um, really, you know, so many things. I'm, I'm really excited to dig into it. So and uh, such sage advice for for leaders at all levels, as yeah. you said. Yeah. Is it's, it available now? 
Oh, yes, it is. Thank you. It is available on Amazon. Uh, so yeah, look up life lessons and leadership. And actually, it's written in a format where I wrote the lessons part. And I have a co author named Michael Barrett, who wrote wonderful stories about these wallaby characters, two women wallabies, Sheila and Josephine, a mother and daughter, and they go through and explain they they illustrate the lesson that is being taught at that time. So it's a combination of both. And we envision that the book is used not only for adults, but you know, in various organizations and schools. Uh, because I think another thing we've learned through the pandemic is that leadership really matters. And so we need to grow leaders. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the reasons we have there. Absolutely. Oh, such sage advice from all three of you. The, the next thing that I'd like to just explore with you a little bit is what was it like to be a woman leader in a traditionally man's world? Did you face obstacles? Were there not? How was it for you? Lisa, you want to run with that one. <laughs> Ann and I were talking about that a little bit earlier. I have to say that, you know, you know you're going to encounter people you're going to have conflict with. Um, as, as women in the industry, you, you know, people, you know, making a sexual remark or putting a hand on you. I mean, that was just part of what happened. And you just had to kind of figure out how to deal with it. Um, and I, I mean, I have some instances where I needed help and I, I must say I went to bosses and they were, I was telling Anna story where um, I was moved into a job in product development that I went to the boss of, of the man I was working for, did something tremendously inappropriate. And I said, I can't work for this man any longer. And he said, okay, well, we'll find you another job. Yeah. And they put me in charge of product development. It was time at Time Life Books. Mm -hmm. And um, I might wow. not be doing what I'm doing if he hadn't given me a product development job. And it, you know, but he was very supportive. So I, 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 you know, I, I feel okay about all of that. And I felt, you know, being a woman, I graduated from college in 74. And I actually spent two years in public accounting. Wow. And they were really trying to recruit women into public accounting. I was with a big Arthur Anderson back in the yeah, day. Yeah. And, um, you know, it was, it was like, an. I, I mean, for me, it was really a big adventure. I have to say that. And, you know, you, you always encounter things that are going to be, but to do something new and to be, you know, on the frontier of, of um, you know, being someplace where women weren't normally um, was, was, I, I really thought it was great. Yeah, I'd like to interject here because I do think that, yes, women have different skills and men have different skills. You know, we found out in this study, this Harvard study, that even though women had really much better skills in a lot of areas, they weren't as strong in strategic planning and um, in fi finances. So you always hear the numbers guy, mm -hmm. he's the numbers yeah. guy. Well, yeah. I think mm -hmm. women are starting to really think about that. They are more visionaries, they're more strategic, they're finance. But we only learn that by working with men and with women. And I was very fortunate to Pearson to have a very strong woman leader because most of my mentors had been male until I went to Pearson and Marjorie Scordino, who was just amazing. Yeah. So when we were doing the book and Lisa and I, I mean, um, Anne and I were doing a lot of presentations together, she kind of came up with her four L's. Well, I came up with Hurley's tips for yes. emerging leaders. So I really wanted, and I get a lot of calls about these and they're just so great. simple. Mm -hmm, I mean, they're great. just so simple and I'm going to go through them really quickly. But the first one is don't trash talk anybody at any time, because you're going to end up working for that person, <laughs> another company, and you'll be out, you know, and I just have seen so much over 45 years that I go, what? Or complaining about a boss or, or make it work. So that's kind of that's the first great. one. And then network, network, network. Everybody knows that's my uh, mantra. Even if you don't want to network, I can tell stories where I was at meetings. I didn't want to go to reception. I forced myself to go and it was fabulous. You know, I met lots of really great people. So, you know, and I've had situations a lot of time. I know a lot of people in this industry, but it's a lot of people I don't know. So I was just at ASU GSB and I was invited to a dinner with 25 women leaders. I didn't know one of them. And someone said, not possible. No. <laughs> I said, I'm going because I want to meet 25 new people. Wow. So I think networking is just really critical. And then always err on the side of generosity. You know, why do you always have to be the right? Why can't you say, oh, yeah, I never thought about it that way. So being generous, I think. And uh, of course, you work for very 
generous executives. And uh, I think that's really important that you don't have to be the right all the time. Develop relationships. We all know that you developing relationships is critical for the long term. Surround yourself with smart people, like you said. Uh, you have to have smart people and never, you know, I that's always been a key of mine for sure. And then listen, then lead. I always laugh when you think about people in the room, when you're talking, you're not listening, you know, and you have to be really astute you got to be listening because you're not going to learn if you're not going to listen that was so your first taking point. Her, her yeah. L's. we've yeah. talked a lot about these yeah. right um but i think these are really things we all know but we have to remind ourselves absolutely because we can get caught up in other things but really what boils down to is you know be in the moment and take all of those um that list of advice pieces of advice that you provided um but be mindful of all of those like you said i mean we know right but it's it's one thing to know and another thing to actually put it into practice and be mindful of it so um i think you're otherwise what's the point right you're what's the point of going to the meeting if you're not actually going to be listening right so it really is uh, important to bring all of those full circle be mindful and i just would say when you say work with, with good people i just feel so blessed to work in the education industry i i think that so many every you know so everyone's working for the benefit of educators yes. and students and it, i just think that everyone has always been so helpful and trying to help each other and so i think it's just a wonderful industry to work in I want to add one one other thought on particularly talking about leading innovation and it, looking back over the last year and a half. I think we also have to remember to give each other a little grace mm -hmm. because when you and when you try something new and it doesn't work perfectly, that's a, a lesson learned, you know, and you can move on. And sometimes it's just so easy to criticize when things don't work. So uh, I really think, and when I look back at the heroic work of teachers over the last year and a half, and it didn't all work perfectly. Okay, mm -hmm. it didn't. Let's let's figure out why and let's move on, you know? But so we the need- The only way to grow is to be a risk taker, right? right. Yep. So right. you have to give yourself grace when right. you do that. Uh, but then also others who are trying to go out, you know, break boundaries and do, and do new things. So I completely agree. And I hear innovators say, fail forward. Yes. Yeah. yeah. When you fail, you, you are moving forward as with your failures as well. Yeah. You know, I've heard, yeah. just real quick, yeah, with yeah. fail, I, I did not come up with this. I heard it from someone else, but I'm so glad you mentioned that fail forward. That fail is really an acronym for first attempt in learning. Yes. And if you think of it like that, that way, you yeah. know, than that. So yeah, Lisa. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I really had to deal with that starting a company. So, sure, yeah. um, and I was a perfectionist, right? So the idea of failing yeah. was really traumatic, you know, for me. But I actually had a conversation with a, a guy who I had a lot of respect for. And I you know I was saying to him, you know, you started something and you just have more confidence. And so you just think you can do it, right? And I'll never forget, he said to me, no, I don't necessarily think I can do it, but I think about what I want to do and I do it anyway. Oh, wow. And someone else also said at one point, you can change your life if you change the question you ask yourself. So when I would be faced with something and the biggest thing was, do I want to start this company, <laughs> yeah. right? And if I had asked myself, can I do it? You, you, first of all, you can't answer that question and you know, you get hung up in how well will I do it and whatever. But if you ask yourself, do I want to? And if you just ask yourself that every day, one day after That's another, so I would wake up in the morning and I would say, do I want to do it today? And there were t really tough days, really crazy tough days. And I would just say yes. And like, okay, then I will do it today. And that, that literally has been the key for me to be able to do what I did. As an innovator, as an entrepreneur, that is really important advice, I think. It really is. Because it also boils down to you can do anything if you have the passion for it. So you have to, you know, continually ask yourself that and make sure. And you can, you can move forward if you have that passion. Um, and we had a Paralympian, like Classlink sponsored uh, a program this week with Classroom Champions and Bears was on with um, Dan Kanas and the Paralympian. Yeah, wow. And his advice was not just one day at a time. He, he lost both legs in Afghanistan wow. and it was one minute at a time getting through his rehab. Right. Yeah. So this thing like you hear that a lot where sure you want to have your eye on the future. 
but sometimes you you need to have he called it a micro goal i yeah. love that and i yeah. really love that idea Oh, that's so funny because one of our guests talked about the uh, uh, Dr. Salvatore, Michael Salvatore, talk about those micro goals. Yes. And then we actually had classroom champions on a podcast that they do amazing work. Oh, yeah. inspiring. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, the other thing I learned a long time ago is they say, ask yourself, what's the worst thing that can happen? Oh, so if you too. are starting a company, the worst thing that can happen is it won't work. So you do something else. Right. And if you can answer that question and not like go into, you know, catatonic space, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, just mm -hmm. not be so worried about it, um, you can answer that. I mean, if I'm running late to a meeting, you know, and I just, there's nothing I can do about it, stuff in traffic, I go, what's the worst thing that can happen? Well, someone's going to be upset. And I guess I have to handle that. <laughs> so uh, that's important. Or to a plane. Or to a plane. <laughs> <laughs> if you miss it, you miss it. <laughs> Yeah. With all of this sage advice and all of this experience that you have, we like to ask the question, over the years, what has become clear to you? Can you distill that down into a thought or an idea as we wrap up today? What's become clear? Um, for me, what's become clear is we can always learn something new from another person. And that's why I'm just such a big um, uh, person about this whole mentoring thing. You know, and the more you meet people, the more you're going to learn something. And I think I've learned that. And that whole thing about listening and not not talking so much as listening. And that's important. I think just surround yourself with really good people to kind of build on what Kathy said, you know, and look look for new folks all the time and listen and learn from new people and what are their ideas and what are they doing, you know, and just absorb as much as you can when you have the privilege of being around other people as I do today with these people. <laughs> so yes, and the two of you, this is just great. So yeah, learn from others. I would say that we have more power than we realize. Mm -hmm. And that if you have purpose, you have to have purpose. purpose. You have to know what you want to do and it should be a good purpose <laughs> and well, <that> too. <laughs> so i mean if you have a good purpose that's really motivating to you i have found that not just empowering for me but when you talk to other people people sense yeah. that you're doing something because you're motivated by it and i've been i mean kathy and, and Anne are on my advisory board they give me so much help all the time so many people have and it's really um and that becomes uh, humbling when you see how people are willing to help you you know it's interesting you said that because the, book, the next book um, the book that's coming out in the fall we really struggled with that and we really came up with the subtitle about women working in purpose-driven organizations uh, uh, I like and i think purpose-driven organizations is where we all want to be part of and whether it's social purchase um, social or uh, what the purpose is but i think uh elise and i uh, do a lot of work with the group called women's education project and we're working with young girls in india and we're te you know because they they don't want to get married at 14 you know they really want to be in a skill they want to be in a career they're going to community college but listening to them you know when we're giving them leadership advice and we're helping them in india no less you feel like i have a purpose here that even though I'm retired, I can really help people all over the world. So I think purpose-driven is critical. I think that I agree. Yes. Yeah. Such great advice today. And, and your mentorship, I know to Jamie and I has been so important. And we're looking forward to getting to spend the evening with the three yeah. of you ladies. I was gonna say, I know it is clear to me. It is clear yes. that it's cocktail time. And that <laughs> purpose can be fun. Purpose <laughs> right. can be fun. Right, right. The rooftop bar over there is calling our name. So um, Age yeah. Before Beauty. <laughs> We are so thrilled to share this podcast with not just other women, because all right. of your advice goes for everyone. It goes for uh, the young, the you know students, um, those getting started. You know, over 50. You know, life lessons. <laughs> over 50. Well, That's thank great. you for thinking of us. Yes, I mean, this you. was we really you know, appreciate really, it. We're really excited about doing this. Right. It's so an honor you. and a privilege. To be and we like to remind our listeners. Uh, that we have started something new 
on our roadmap, and that is that if people listen to our podcast, they can earn some CEU credit. And we're excited to offer that. And so we like to remind them about that. And also, we will be inviting you three ladies on to Clubhouse. Are you members of Clubhouse? Are you on that app? I am on it. But Fabulous. Love, love to be in a new group or that would be great. Yes. So, pull Jamie, them, you want to pull them in. Pull the ladies into Clubhouse, yes. Lisa. Um, <laughs> yeah, <everyone>, All right. <laughs> we have one tonight we're supposed to do. We, uh, every one, most Wednesday nights, um, we have a a clubhouse topic based on the week's podcast so and it's at 9 p.m eastern so uh, we will set that up if you're all on clubhouse then please um check us out and for those you ladies i will have you as hosts and we will continue this conversation Great. so that people don't just have to listen they can interact with you oh, and I ask questions that. as well yes great 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 idea so we will also have links to the books and i have another idea churning in my head from all of this sage advice oh. we're going to talk to the lady about ladies about putting marketing to work on some things all right yes all right so thank you so much for joining us okay thank you thank you, thank thank you. you. Thank you. happy hour beautiful you know, after yeah, yeah. Park. asbury park yeah, see, there's the lady right over there. Bad. There they are. Thank you for listening. And if you would like to stay linked up, be sure to follow us on Apple and Spotify and subscribe to us on YouTube.